Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. Today in the chapel, we have In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ concerning you. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 So, yeah, just thankful for everything. I hope everybody had a great 4th of July. Um, a safe 4th of July. Um, today, I do have an off the hook. Yay! I've been working really hard on two to get them off the hook, but I have the shrug. Ta da! I have two ends to weave in. I don't know if I like it with the purple up or the pink up, or the mauve, I guess I'd say. So, but I just have the two ends right here to weave in, and then I'm done. So I'm good with that. Yay. So there's my off the hook. And then when I got that one done, I worked to get another round on this one. The stitches are just so tiny. It really does not look like I'm making progress, but I am. So, oops, let me get that one. There we go. You can see that this is growing. The white is growing. So, yeah. It'll get there. I am trying to get this one done as well. So I'll be working on it. I didn't even pick up the Round the World Inspired Blanket. I'm really trying to get these two done and out of here so that I can work on some other things, which I'm excited to show you today. Um, all right. I don't have anything in the pots or on the die wheel. In the fields, I have some cucumbers that are probably ready, I think. Um, I'm going to go out there and, and tonight and dig. The vines are so viney, it, it's just hard to see. Um, I have a couple of tomatoes. I think I have one okra that's about ready to be. And maybe some baby zucchini, zucchini squash. So it'll be the first day that I get to harvest. I'm watching it really closely. So, yeah. Um, it is what it is. Uh... All right, in RG's world, um, nothing really going on with him. I mean, yes, there's things going on with him, but nothing to report. He's rodeoing. He's doing good. Knock on wood. Doing great. Uh, no catastrophes, no anything. He's just going. His girlfriend came up, and they went to Moline, Kansas last night to um, a rodeo that is a big fireworks show. So, um, they were spending the 4th of July together. Um, but yeah. All right. In the farmhouse here. Um, so first and foremost, we have a wounded duck. Um, I don't know what happened to the duck, but we're speculating that a turtle got its foot. The first day there was blood dripping off. He barely moved around. Second day, he moved around, but he limped a lot. And then yesterday, we noticed he was just kind of, but he still walks with a limp. So, he's doing fine. Never could catch him to actually get my hands on him. So, remember, these are not the ducks that I'm used to. Like, they're not the pets that RJ used to raise. Everything was handled so much at the farm. I'm not used to not being able to catch them to see what's going on with them. Um, most of the time, they come right up to us if they were hurting. So, now I'm like, I don't know, can't hardly see, but I do think a turtle got his uh, foot and there is one out at the pond that is a large size roommate. And I don't know what we're going to do. I'm not very much. I said, go fishing. Let's see if we catch it, get it out of there, <laughs> go relocate it or something. I don't know. <laughs> That's the only way I ever caught turtles was when we were fishing, you know, they take our bait. So that was my big idea. I, I don't think it'll work, but hey, worth a try. Um, the other thing, one other thing that we did concerning the pond is we got some big treble hooks and we're going to start dragging the branches and logs out of there. We're just going to tie a rope onto it, chunk it out, and just start dragging stuff out of that pond. There's a bunch of logs and limbs and, and just yucky stuff in there. So we're going to start dragging some of the bigger stuff that we can see out of there. Um, all right. I think now we're on to the part I want to share. Um, 
I I move this around now. We'll see what this does. Okay. Don't look at the mess, okay? But if you look, I brought my other sewing machine down. That is the old one. I have the sewing box over there underneath the cover for the sewing machine because I was busy. And then if you look back here, yep, I've been working. So let me grab the one that's easiest to show you. Okay. And you'll know what these are. Anybody who's followed us for a while will know what these are. Um, and so I brought my material totes from the farm. And, oops, that's an old one. You got it. I mean, I have 10 of these. Now, some of these had been started, and I just finished them. None of them have the cam snaps on them yet. So, I'm just going to hold them up and show you. Got that one. We've got this one. And this one has giraffes on one side. And elephants on the other. Remember, these are made from old carpet, or not car, uh, upholstery samples. They're upside gold. So we have a boating one. We have green flowered ones. Now, I used to put a bottom in this old one. I used to square up the bottoms with a little square. But I do think you get more in it if you have them more open. So, yeah, got this one. Got, I just think this is the cutest thing. That one. Um, a purple one. I think we've got all array of colors here. And this one's got flowers and such. And we've got blue. And then we have this one here, which is kind of a fall looking one. So I made those. I, okay, so they were already ready to sew. All I had to do was sew them together. Um, when I quit making bags, I had some in progress. And so that is pretty much what you're seeing is those were in progress. I had plans to make them, but I hadn't gotten there yet. Um, it's seven o'clock. I have to finish this up and get ready for work. I've got plenty of time. Okay, so then I found this one, a couple of these. Oops. So these are two of the Scooby ones, and they just need the um closures done where you seam them together. And then they need cam snaps put on them. So, and there's actually two of them. There's Scooby Doo. Eh, wonder who was who influenced that. So there's that one, those, and then this one is a little project bag. One of what we call the peekaboo bags, and it literally just needs the top um, pressed and then sewed, and then uh, it needs the drawstrings through it. So, yeah, this one just needs to draw a string through it, and it's cookies. So, those, and then I found all of these that, and I did start to work on them. See, here's a drawstring for one, and I'm starting to use, I, I've got to get a, a, what do they call it, bias maker or whatever, um, so that I don't have to do this. I, I do this by hand the hard way. So I'm going to pick up some bias makers. They're not that much off of Amazon, but, um, and some of these are pins, so you're not going to see really good, but this one that's faded. That's the back of it. I don't know if you can see that there's good color in there. And these are cream colored bags and these are peekaboo bags. And that's why I don't want to undo them. Um, so there's that one and then the little girl drifting off in thought and that's the back side of the material so those are all pinned and ready to sew and then just need the drawstrings 
you know, which I started working on. Then we have, and this one isn't pinned. Well, it is kind of, sort of. Oh, well, hang on. There's one more in here. <coughs> oh, um, this is a little one. It just needs sewed. It's got the Wizard of Oz on one and the Yellow Brick Road liner. For the back, it just needs sewed. It needs a drawstring. Then this one isn't sewed. Uh, this is the inside, and it will be totally yellow. It's going to be yellow, like so, with the little pocket there. And then I'll have the M&M &M on the back. So it'll look like that. So that one needs to be put together and sewed. And then I found, I found three or four of these and they're not even finished. This is, they have the, all the parts here. Um, for, and I found three or four of these with the sheep. So I'll be putting all those together. And then those are the peekaboo bags that I found. Okay. And this is all the bags. And like I said, I had worked on these and just when I quit going to shows or whatever, this is what I was working on. And then I found some cute drawstring bags. Um, the M&M &M one. And these are just the material. None of them have been a flowery with the oops flower with the red. That's the back side. Um, this one's dark green with some it looks like green flowers. So there's a bunch of little drawstring ones here that or I don't know if I was gonna make them with drawstrings or camp snaps. I'll be honest with you. Don't know. But I worked on that. Um, then I, basically I sorted through the material. I got these, some of them I started and finished up those, the carpet bags. I finished all of those. I finished 10 of those. Um, and then I just have to put the cam snaps on them. And then I started piecing these and just kind of playing with it. Um, so yeah, I did that. But then, uh, I had a brilliant idea, I guess. Uh, let me see here. Sorry. All right. So, and I've actually started to work on it. For Christmas, I am going to make RJ a rope bag, Macy a um, for lack of any other word, a bag for her cosmetology stuff. And I'll explain that here in a little bit. And then I'm going to make my daughter a purse and I'm going to do it all out of canvas. I'm going to keep them simple, but they're all going to be handmade. RJ sent me a picture of the purse that he got Macy. Now it's made of leather and cowhide. It was very expensive and he said, it was her Valentine's birthday and Christmas all together because he couldn't afford to do something that nice all the time. And so, you know, when you are young and you find a really nice gift, you want to give it to them, but then you can't afford to do something that extravagant all the time. Well, he sent me a picture and this is why I had my phone here. Um, me. Bring it up. So this is a picture of the purse, and that's all cowhide and leather work. Okay. So no, I don't cowhide leather work or whatever. But I'm I definitely, he says, can you make the bag for her cosmetology stuff match? So I took the style of the bag and this is my first little doodle. Okay. And I doodled it out. 
So I'm going to do it round. Inside it's going to have five or six pockets. How many? I don't know if that's showing. There we go. Five or six. So this is looking down in the bag. Okay. It's also going to have two compartments. Um, this bottom part, this wavy right here, is going to be a zipper. And I'm going to make this bottom for, and I don't know how big, oh, I'm knocking stuff over. I don't know how big around it's going to be. I'm going to literally lay my blow dryer down and make sure, because I have a long blow dryer, and make sure that there's enough room for that. Um, then, and I've come up with an idea. I don't know if it's going to work. I, I, I need something to sturdy up the bottom so that when she puts her stuff in it, then I'll just collapse. You want it to have that round shape. And I think I'm going to use the embroidery rings, the big ones, and see if I can find a big one that'll just set down in there and kind of keep that edge shape. So it's going to be round. The bottom will zip off. This top part will just be a drawstring type. It'll have the five pockets in it so that she can put her straight razor, her combs, her um, Arjun, I had this talk about everything that she carries with her. She has a job, but she doesn't have her own chair. There is eight people that work at the facility, but there's only six chairs. So six of them are there at all times, but they have to carry their stuff back and forth. So she's got combs and brushes and, and that's what's going to go in these pockets. And I'm going to make it tall enough that it will go in it. It'll be a drawstring top this. So what I am going to do is on the inside of the flap, I don't know if you can see that, where it lifts up, I'm going to put a pocket with a zipper. And then right here on the outside, I'm going to put a pocket with a zipper. That way, bobby pins, hair ties, whatever, can go in the small one. And then it's just going to have a flap and, of course, the handle. And it'll close. The inside will close with a drawstring and then flop over and snap. So, um... I'm going to make this one first, and I decided that I'm going to use canvas for all of these. Um, to match that purse, hers is going to be a cream color and brown. Um, RJ's rope bag, I'm going to find a really cool, uh, I'm going to start going, this I picked up at Walmart, they call it duck cloth, and I am going to literally Google duck cloth and get, I don't know, an array of colors. Um, I think for RJ, I'm going to do either a blue or a pink one, or he loves pink, but I'm going to do it two-tone. Um, all of them are going to be two-tone. His rope bag is going to be pretty simple. Um, it's just going to be a big round bag, you know, with the handles on it. <coughs> and it's just going to have carrying handles. Because he used to throw it over his shoulder, but anymore he just grabs it and goes. So, um, and his and hers will be for Christmas. My daughter, I haven't even designed the purse yet, but it's probably going to be um, like that crossbody that I did. I don't have it in here. I was looking. I made a crossbody for myself, um, and I did it out of, I believe, corduroy. But I think I'm going to do it out of duck cloth. And then, um, I don't know. For her other half, I might do like a briefcase. Just, you know, one that would do a notebook and some books in it. Because he does IT stuff. So, I don't know. But anyway, that is what I'm doing for Christmas. And these will progress. These are going to start taking a lot of my time. I'm going to do some bags. Um, I am approaching a lady who had kind of hinted she wanted some bags for her shop that she just opened. I'm going to see, you know, what she says. But the purses and bags are that are for Christmas are going to, I want to get them done. You know me. It's July. I need to be done with Christmas by now. So I'm going to make those. Uh, and then... For roommate, I don't know what I'm going to do, but it will be a bag too. Last year, I did crochet items. This year, I'm doing sewing items, and I'm going to do bags. So, yeah. All right. I think you're up to date now that I've trashed this room again. Ah! Losing focus. 
focus, keep focus. Stay with me. Um, I did do one other thing, and it's just kind of for fun. Um, so our Fourth of July, we cooked out. We made some amazing chicken. Marinated that stuff overnight. Put it on the grill. Oh my goodness, it was amazing. Um, we made potato salad. I made my grandma's baked beans. We made a dump cake. Um, for the record, roommate's birthday is also 4th of July. Just saying. So, um, we kind of just stayed home and people came by to say happy birthday and, you know, just whatever. Our day called roommate and saying happy birthday. <laughs> it was funny. Anyway, roommate loved it. So, we were all out there, and, and that night you could see fireworks. For three nights straight, you could see fireworks from the yard. And I mean, nice shows, high up in the air and beautiful colors, and you could hear the booms. Hitch had a fit, worm. He just barked at him. He was like, I don't know what it is, but <laughs> So, as we were sitting out there, I came up with this, and it's just for fun. So, critique if you want, whatever. Um, an old couple sits on the porch, reminiscing about the ways they had once spent their July 4th. Remembering the pride of the parades that used to make their way through town. The floats, the horses, and even some clowns. Thinking of the cookouts they had in the park. Playing, blowing bubbles, waiting for dark. They remember going into town just to watch the fireworks at the rodeo ground. Their minds drift back in time, remembering the cowboys with the horses and twine. Things were much simpler way back then when everyone you met you referred to as friend. And after all the oohs and ahs had all faded away, those were the memories, and this is silly, those were the memories locked forever in their minds to stay. It was just missing the times when my kids were little. Um, remembering the things. I mean, some 4th of July's were harder. RJ was really sick some years. Um, that's where the blowing bubble comes in because he couldn't, um, couldn't be around the smoke. So for years, we didn't set off fireworks. Um, I remember when he was two or three, we went to the local park and we sat there and blew, blew bubbles and everybody knew RJ and knew he had his little mask on and, you know, and, and just, they'd stop by, how's he doing today? And we talked about, you know, this, that, and the other. And it was just a little, small, local hometown feel. And RJ's always been their hero. He definitely is a story of endurance. Um, he never gave up. He never acted handicapped. And through everything that he's done, he has made quite a few friends in that town. So, a lot of people love and support him there. But anyway, we were just reminiscing about those things. And I kind of miss the holidays under those pre It's different when you have a little one that, you know, as the kids grew up, we got out of town and, and got to the country. Um, RJ could do like little sparklers and hold them away from his face and, uh, one year I can remember we fired up that grill and didn't turn it off. We fired it up at noon. People were coming and going. We had homemade ice cream and watermelon and I don't know how many burgers. Like we're talking 30, 40 burgers, 30, 40 hot dogs, kids in and out. Um, I remember we locked up all the horses. Um, at that time we only had like two or three and we set off fireworks and just we did a big spread. There was meat and cheese trays. The kids could just pick with toothpicks. I remember one year, Tori and her friends, they were older. They were probably 17, 16, 17, you know, 
junior seniors in high school and they put those little toothpicks that have the little foil things come on and they put them in their hair and there was a bat dive bombing them and it's just fun stories and we've spent a lot of time this fourth of july you know we're older rj's rodeo and with his girlfriend he's not going to take his mom anymore um and roommate Roommate's grandma used to make roommate's birthday amazing. Um, grandma always made sure that it was a big hoopla and all that. And that's why we, we charcoaled out and that's what they used to do. And But as we get older, the big hoopla is a lot of work. <laughs> and we just don't want to clean up the mess and we don't want to, you know, and Roommate and I are not going to get out there and light fireworks. We're just not. So, it is what it is. But, yeah. Um, so, we reminisced a bit. And we had a good 4th of July. And we hope that all of you did too. As you can tell, I've been kind of taking over the office. just Because we don't have any other place to, to do this. And so, um, doing some sewing going to get the Christmas stuff going. I really like it. I, I definitely, this is just a yard and it is, um, because deck cloth is 58 inches wide. It's a lot. So we've got, it's, you know, so I could be able to, should be able to make Macy's, Tories, and I believe Tories other half briefcase out of the brown. RJ, he's not a brown kid. He, he's just not. But we'll see. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so I'm going to get off here. I do have to get ready to go to work. Um, I'm liking the job. And I don't know. I just, yeah. Lots going on. But not a whole lot of anything. So I hope you guys had a great fourth. We did. And I hope that your week to come is full of things to be thankful for. Have a good week and we'll talk to you next time. Bye.